Okay, now we're moving on to a new discussion altogether, and that's about one of the most important distributions of all, the normal distribution. It's the infamous bell curve, and you can see it right here. So the plot is usually symmetric around the mean, in fact, um, mostly that's the definition of the normal distribution. So let's see, if we take a look here, you can see that a normal distribution has some set parameters, uh, and one of the main ones is the mean itself. So where does that normal distribution have its, its mean centered about? You know, it, we can shift it over from zero, in other words. And also, the standard deviation. So standard deviation just gives us an idea of how spread out, or not spread out. I'm terrible at drawing these things with this. So uh, how spread out or not spread out a distribution might be. Let's see. I'm trying to show. So this one would have a very broad standard dis deviation. And this one... In, let's see, in blue right here, would have a small standard deviation. It would be even better if I could draw better. Anyway, the probability density function is given by this sort of really horrible looking term uh, or function, which actually isn't that bad at all. If you look at what's going on up here, it's like saying, look, Take wherever you're at on this curve, take the difference between um, that point and the mean, square it, kind of divide it out by standard deviation squared. Well, this is this is all almost like some kind of term that's, I don't know what you want to call it, maybe z squared over 2, something like that. I mean, it's as if this is just a simple term right here. And, um, and actually, we're going to see that it really is. It's just e raised to some ec or z squared power. So that should kind of give you, because you've got a z squared, you've got some factor squared up here, it kind of gives you the sense that around some point, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, a reflection of itself. And that indeed is the case. So here we go, we've got normal distribution right here, and you can see there's a, um, uh, where there our standard deviation is small. We have something that's bunched up around uh, a smaller point, and where the standard deviation is larger, we end up going out on a limb, so to speak. So, the normal distribution, the the most interesting thing about it is this cumulative distribution function. And you can see we just integrate it just the way we would any probability um, density function. Um, notice this value right there is just pronounced zeta. And the neat thing and the thing that should really make you happy is that there is no closed form solution for this integral. Hey. That sounds terrible, right? But what it means is we look up the answers in a table. That actually is just a heck of a lot easier. Instead of doing all this cumbersome uh, integration, which I know is one of your favorite things to do, um, but even so, you can avoid that by going to the tables. And we're going to give you some nice examples. We, my tapeworm and I, what they always used to say that only, what, um, God, kings, and people with tapeworms can say we. So, I shall not use that again. <laughs> Do you believe me? Okay, here we go. We've got tables that contain values of the normal distribution for the standard normal va random variable. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to look at some of these tables and, and get a feel for how to use it with the standard normal distribution. And then you'll see that with just the most minor of tweaks, we can actually apply that whole idea to virtually any 
of uh, a distribution that has virtually any um, mean and any standard deviation. Because notice here what the standard normal distribution is, it implies that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Well, that's not always going to be the case. But anyway, uh, we're going to first learn how to use the, uh, the tables with the standard normal random variables. So off we go. And first off here, I want you to go to your book on page, let's see if I can get this, on page 709, you're looking at table 3, and you should be able to see pretty much this same table that I've got right here. And if you'll notice at the top of your page, I'll have phi is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over 2 pi, oops, square root of 2 pi, e to the minus 1 half u squared d, oops, du. And this is actually the probability, we could say v is actually a function of z, and it's the probability that our z is going to be greater than or equal to some set value of z. So you're wondering, okay, what is she really talking about here? What I'm really talking about is this distribution right here is the integral of this complex looking equation. And right, I'm going to draw a line right here. Notice these are z values, right? Actually, this should have centered it better, should be 0. So if I fill this all in right there, this z that I select right here, what we're actually calculating is the probability that um, our that we'll have um, a z that's less than this little z value right here. Now, I, I, I don't think I explained that very well. Let's try again with this. I'm going to erase all the stuff. Avast virus database has been updated. Oh, now you know my Avast has updated. Okay, I'm trying to get over to this. Let's get this erased to erase right here. Okay, so let's try again. We're going to use this color. I'm going to put this right in the middle. I'm trying, and that's supposed to be at zero, so ignore this stuff right here. Okay, now the entire area underneath this curve adds up to one. The area that's under half of the curve, starting from this point 0, had better well be 0.5, right? Because we can see that the whole curve, under the area under the whole curve, is 1. Well, look here. At the point where z is equal to 0, we'll put this back in red, z is equal to 0, we have an area of 0.5. Well, now let's say z is equal to 0.1. So we're just a little bit up from there. Okay, z is 0.1. Wouldn't you expect that, oops, I again, can't draw very well, that all of this area is going to be equal to just a skosh more than 0.5? Well, indeed, that's what we see. It's equal to a skosh more. What about if we were at one standard deviation? 
Okay, so we want oh, ignore this. This is like um, right here. This is going to be like at point uh, at one. I'll call it something like that. Okay, again, it's really hard to draw on this stuff. But look, at one standard deviation, I should have kind of a fair bit more than 0.5. And look at that. I've got like 0.84. Hey, that's not too shabby. All of these things are just, they just give us a way of quantifying how does the Z value compare with uh, the area under the curve. And that's all this table does. Now, you, so look at, if we were at 1.00, so 1.00 means 1.00. So you read these, this top portion gives you the fractions. If we were at 1.01, .01, there we'd read down to here, you know, from this column. So we'd be at 0 0.8438. If we were at 1.02, then we'd be over at this value. So you kind of get a sense of how to start reading these values. Okay, so for our first problem here, we're supposed to find, well, we've got the standard normal distribution. We're supposed to find the area under the curve which lies, now the first one is, come back here, Got Z is equal to 1.43. Ignore these numbers again, right? Okay. Okay, so we know that right under the, the topmost part is zero. That's where the mean is. That's for the standard normal distribution. So we're supposed to be at Z is equal to 1.43. I don't know. That's going to be like around here. It's always important to try and visualize these things when you're is equal to Z when you're working with this. So that means we're looking for this area. We want to find it in the tables. You can see it's going to be something that's per getting close to 1 because 1 would mean the whole area and this has most of the area. So we've got 1.43. Now I've got a very handy little table here I can pull up Okay, so we're supposed to look for Z is equal to 1.43. Let's go down a little bit. Ah, okay. So we're in pretty good shape. Let's hope that I can, I'm not sure I can draw on this little puppy. Let's see, 1.4 and look, I'm reading down on this axis. Let's see, can I draw? this. I don't think it's, no, it won't let me do it. Okay, so we're just going to go down uh, 1.43. This is where the, the 3 part is. And we're going to go down to 1.4. And the answer is 0 0.9236. So we'll go over here and say that it is 0 Point nine. What did I say? Rats. My memory is failing me. Uh, 9236. 236. Wasn't that easy? That's just peachy keen easy. Okay, so now we're going to look for the area to the right of z is equal to minus 0.89. So, well, let's erase everything we did before, get it out of our way, and we now are looking for minus 0.89. So, I don't know if this is zero. Again, ignore the writing there. Okay, so this is zero. So minus 0.89, I don't know, it's going to be something like minus 0.89 will be right around here. And it's supposed to be the area to the right of that. So let's see if I can, here's, here's our line. 
and it'll be everything to the right of that. Right? So this is the area we're looking for. You can see it's going to be, well, at the very least it's going to be bigger than one half, right? Um, maybe not a huge number bigger than one half, but kind of bigger. So let's see. Now the unfortunate thing is when you're looking for these kinds of tables, it's hard to find good ones. So the only negative tables I can find are a little bit blurry. Now you want to be making sure that you can find these values in your book. So remember what we're looking for is z is equal to minus 0.89. So we're looking minus 0.8. Here's, here is minus 0.8 right here. And we're going to have to look all the way Let's see, I'm going to show you at the very top of the table. Look at that. See how we've got the top values? And all the way over to the right is going to be 9. So let's go back down to our point, minus 0.89. So we've got minus 0.8. And they made it easy for us. All we have to do is go all the way over to the edge. And it's 1, 0.1867. 0.1867. But what we've just found, and this is key, we've found this stuff in yellow. It always shows the cumulative distribution function, uh, the results from that, which means it's going to be what's to the left. So, well, that's easy. All we have to do is take 1 minus that value and that will give us this stuff in blue to the right. And 1 minus that value is going to be 0 0.8133. In fact, I should write that 0 0.8133. And that is all this stuff to the left. And remember I was saying it's we know it's going to be bigger than 0 0.5, kind of bigger, but not not like, you know, tiny, leaving only a tiny area there. So this sounds about right. Okay, now we're on to, okay, number three. Number three is, let's see, z is between minus 2.16 and z is equal to minus 0.65. Well, look, all we have to do now remember, minus 2.16, that's going to be somewhere right here, right? It's going to be, so the value in the z table is going to give us that area. And then minus 0.65, well, here's 0, so I don't know, it's going to be like here. So minus 0.65, oh, there was thunder, did you hear that? Okay, so we've got this I'm going to I'm going to take this all in green. Notice the green kind of goes also into the previous area, but my ink doesn't smear, which is very nice. Okay. So, all we have to do is find those two areas, subtract the big or the little one from the big one, and we're all done. So, we will do that. First, well, let's erase this. Okay, we got it. it's all gone. Okay, so now we're going to say, what is the area that's less than minus 2.16? So z is uh, less than minus 2.16. That probability, or the area, is, let's see, we're going to pull up our tables again. Let's see, minus 2.16. Okay. This is, oh, it's my dreadful minus table, which is very blurry. Sorry again. Okay. Minus 2. Let's see. 2.1. And then this is going to be 2.10. 2 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it should be 0 0.0154. Okay. 0 0.0154, 0 0.0154. So that's this little bitty area right here. 
Now we look back again at minus 0 0.65. Okay, we get our really lousy table back here. And where's minus 6.5? Let's see, minus, or 0.65, sorry. Okay, so we've got 0.4. Okay, here's minus 0.6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. That's the value right there. 0. 0.2578. Okay. 0. 0.2578. That's this whole value in green. I should have written it as green. So that's Z is less than, well, or equal to, um, minus 0. 0.65. Okay, so we've got those two values right there. The the one in green, this this big green one, is 0.2578, and this little rascal right there is 0 0.0154. Clearly, to get the value, and I'll, I'll make this into a beautiful purple. Well, it doesn't actually turn out to be purple very well. This is supposed to represent <laughs> just the value, the difference between those values. You know, uh, I'm going to erase it and I'll try again. Sorry about this. Okay, so this is supposed to represent, remember we've got this little tail part that's not included. And so it's kind of like a value like that. And so to find it, we just go 0.2578 minus 0 0.154 and that is 0 0.2424 if I've done my math right and voila we've just done number three. So now they ask the area to the left of z is equal to minus 1.39. Oh that's a snap so we'll just Erase all this stuff. Don't worry, we'll get to some more interesting things here. We're just making sure that we really have everything down now. So let's look. Left of minus 1.39. I don't know. I'd say it's like that. It's going to be some area like that. Okay, so draw our turgid table again. Minus. 1, okay, one, here's 1 1.3, minus 1 1.3, so we're going to have to go all the way to the end of the table to get to 9. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.0823 is what it looks like. So 0 0.0823. So that is the answer altogether. So it was very easy. Now to the right of z is equal to 1.96. Oh, well that one's easy too. Well, okay, there's one little more additional layer of complexity, but we're getting used to that now. So 1.96 will put, right, we know it's probably way out there, you know, pretty far out there. And it's going to be everything Oh, to the right. Okay, so that means everything on this side. So I tried to smear it in there as yellow. Maybe I should put it in more like this. That's going to be that area right there. So we know that what our table is going to give us is everything to the left of 1.96. So let's look it up in our table. We've got, we can use the more beautiful table. Okay, one, here's one point, oh, I hope I, okay, let's see here, 1.90123456. So it's going to be 0 0.975. So let's write that 0 0.975 and so our answer, of course, is going to be 1 minus that, because we're going to the right. And so the solution then is 
0 0.0250. So 0 0.0250, that's our answer. Okay, lastly, so let's clear our space here. We got this. Okay, now we're going to go between uh, minus 0.48 and plus 1.74. Oh, that's pretty easy too. So we go, um, well, here's our zero again. Ignore the numbers behind the curtain there. Okay, zero. So it'll be minus 0.48 and then plus 1.74. And this is all kind of a guess and gosh, of course. So really what you're looking for is this area right here. Okay, so we got it. There we go. And that will turn out to be, okay, so let's, I think you can probably see what you're going to do. You're going to take this value in yellow right here, and then you'll subtract out this whole value that is whatever's less than, you know, the Z value at 1.74, and that'll give you that in between material. So let's do that. First, we'll figure out uh, Z is minus 0.48, so we'll pull up our lousy chart again. Z is equal to minus minus 0.48 okay so we're going over here should be around 0.3156 so 0.3156 oops 6 so we'll 6 and this one right here to the right, that is going to give us a value that is, okay, at 1.74. So let's go look at 1.74. Here's 1.701234. So that's 0 0.9591. 0 0.9591. Nine one so point nine five nine one. Now clearly to get this intermediate part, we've just got to we've just got to subtract the one from the other. So it's point five nine five nine one minus point three one five six, and that gives us zero point six four three five, and voila. Now I know you're wondering, yeah, but okay maybe I see how to do this but what on earth is it good for and I know you're wondering about that but I'm going to keep you in suspense and I'm going to make you think a little bit more about these Z values because what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna look at them sort of uh, backwards so to speak we're gonna see make sure that you know how to look at areas and figure out what the Z value is that's affiliated with an area. Now to really make sure you understand this you always have to look at what they're really saying and draw yourself a picture. So what they're asking here is they say to the right of Z is 0.36 blah blah blah. So what they're really saying is Okay, now remember here's your zero right here. So to the right of Z is 0.36. That now remember everything to the right of zero is going to be a total of 0.5. So 0.36 is going to be around here, right? And that's this value of 0.3622. But the tables give us everything to the left. 
right? So we cover, color that in there. The tables give us that value. All together, everything sums to 1. So what we're going to find on the table for this particular z value is actually going to be the area 1 minus 0.3622. So what is that area? That is 0 is equal to 0 0.6378. Okay, so that's the one we've got to look up the z value for. So we pull up our handy dandy nice table and okay, so it's 0 0.6378. 0 0.63. So we're we're looking on the, the nice neat clean right hand table and we're looking for 0 0.6 Okay, point six three seven eight point six three six eight. Hey, look at this. We found a value here that's pretty dang close. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, there it is. Point six three six eight. Now I don't know about you, but to me that looks close enough. So I'm gonna say the z value affiliated with that is 0.35. Oh, okay. Let's go put that down. 0.35. And we're actually there is equal to z. 0.35. So we got it. Okay, now they ask us, so we actually did a harder one first. Now they're asking us, what is, uh, let's see, the area to the left of z is 0 0.131, 0 0.1131. Okay, let's draw ourselves a little picture. And we'll go like this, and 0, and we know that everything to the left of 0 is 0 0.5, but if they're saying it's 0 0.11, well, it's going to be way down here, right? So let's say that area is 0 0.1131. If that's the case, what is this z? Okay, let's pull up our cruddy table and look up 0 0.1131. Let's see. Look, I'm, I'm looking in the area part. 0 0.11. Oh, look at this. We've got a direct hit right here is 0 0.1131. So all we have to do now is figure out what the z value is. So we go look on the left, it's minus 1.2, and then we go look up to the top, minus 1.21, right? So we got it. Minus 1.21 is equal to the z value. So I should write that up here minus 1.21 is equal to z. So, got that one. Check. Okay, now they're really trying to trick you. Because what they're saying is that between 0 and z, well, let's put this in red. In fact, let me kind of clear things out here a little bit. Okay, got it, got it. And get this all out of the way. Look nice and clear. Okay, between 0 and z, with z greater than 0 is 0.4838. What they really mean is, and here's our little not very well drawn Gaussian curve, between 0 and z with z greater than 0, we have an area of 0.4838. Well look, if we have this z value, that z value is also going to include this, this stuff right in here in blue. 
It, it just comes naturally with the territory. And that is 0.5. So altogether, we're looking for the z value that is 0.5 plus 0.4838. So it will be 0.5 plus 0.4838. So that's going to be 0.9838. What is the z value affiliated with that? We get our nice table up, 0.9838. And we're, remember, we're looking inside at the areas. 0 0.9838, 0.98, okay, where are we? 0.9838, there we go, we've got it right there. I'm going to make it all nice and yellow, I hope. There we go, well, kind of. Anyway, you see it. So, it's right here. And if we go look at the z value, it's going to be point or 2.1, and then let's go up 2.1, and then riding high 2.14. So that's that's our answer. Is z is equal to 2.14. So not too bad. We got it. Now lastly, we've got between minus z and plus z is 0.95. Oh, this is actually their, what they're trying to do here. It's a clever trick. They want you to start getting used to values of 95% confidence. <laughs> These are clever people here. Okay, so let's draw this. Here we go. Ah. Not as bad as some. So what they're saying is between minus z and plus z is an area of 0.95. So that means that I'm going to put this little part in red here. What does this red have to be? It has to be 0.025, right? And this little part here has to be 0.025. So, okay, I don't know about you, but um, by my definition, a good engineer is incredibly lazy. They want to do things the easiest way you can do them. All we have to do is look up this. What is the Z affiliated with an area of 0.025? So, um, let's see. We'll find out, let's see, let's look up on our lousy table, 0 0.025, an area of 0 0.02, and where's 5? 0 0.02, come here, come to me, 0 0.02, let's see, right in here. Uh, uh, we'll call it, how about we call it minus 2.0, right? So uh, so the z affiliated with 0.025, um, let's see if I can do any better than that, 0.025, oh, here we go, I could do better than that. So that z is, let's go back over here, is minus 1.9, that better be 6, yes, minus 1.96. So this z is equal to minus 1.96. Ha, we shall see that number again. But if this z is minus 1.96, what do you think this one is? Well, duh, it is going to be plus 1.96. So the minus and plus z's are between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. And that will give you 95% of your area. Now let's say that we want to use our graph or our normal distribution for something that's abnormal. Well, not really. But let's say 
that instead of having a probability distribution that goes around zero with a standard deviation of one, what, what if we had something that went around, I don't know, maybe three was the mean and it had a tighter distribution, so the standard deviation was minus one, or I'm sorry, was 0.5. So if, if we had something like that and we wanted to figure out probabilities, we sure don't want to have probability tables affiliated with every possible permutation of mean and standard deviation. So what we do instead is we translate, we normalize. So before what we were actually doing was we were saying that whatever our we were actually saying that this value was zero in some sense or rather sorry about that not this value this value was zero the mean was zero so erase that so well let's see race. So the mean, we were always doing everything around the mean, but now we're doing it around some different value. And we're saying this value is not always one, but can actually be something different. Now what we do is we use a simple substitution. We can say instead, we're, we're still going to use our regular z tables, but now we will define our z as always being this value minus mu, in other words, zeta, zeta minus mu over sigma. So if we just do that simple substitution, then we can use our same um, standard distribution table that we had used before. So all we're doing then keep this in mind, this magical formula, our z values are always equal to x, where x might be, you know, the number of cars in a um, parking lot subtracted from, or no, I shouldn't say the number of cars in a parking lot, but rather something like the, um, the weight of a particular car minus the average weight of a car over whatever our standard deviation is. So that's what our, our z value is. So we've just, it's the same idea as before, we've just normalized it. I think the best thing for me to do now is to try and give you an, an example. So hang on here, I know. Okay, so here we've got our handy dandy table excerpted right here. So we have um, at z is equal to 2.00, we've got an area of 9.772. Now, let's say that we have a distribution that has a mean centered around 1 and a standard deviation of 0.5. Now remember, this is, that's maybe our standard distribution, standard normal distribution is going to have a mean, well, it's going to have 0 and 1, right? So it's going to have a mean of z at centered at 0 and a standard deviation at 1. So there we go. But this one is saying, we're going to put this in blue, that we are instead, let's see, it's 0.5, so it's actually, I'm, I'm terrible, uh, is that bad, or is that bad, try that again, okay, so I'm trying to draw something that's representing a little bit tighter distribution, and I'm, I think I'm doing okay, but not that good. Okay, so instead of being at zero, this one's been moved over to one. That's where the mean is. And it's supposed to be a little bit tighter distribution. So 
sigma is equal to 0.5. So you can see there are two different distributions, but if I want to figure out what the heck that um, probability is between different values here, how can I do that? You know, let's say that this represents the range of values of, um, I don't know, cantaloupe weights. Most of them are one kilogram uh, and they have a standard deviation of 0.5. Um, so how could we figure out the probability that we would have a, um, a cantaloupe that ha would have a weight that would be less than two kilograms, right? So we can say it's something like that whole area right there, two kilograms. Well, we don't want to go look up a table that has, you know, a new table that has one, you know, it's centered around one, because it would take us forever to have to deal with this kind of thing. So instead, what we want to do is translate these terms into these terms, figure out the probability, and we're golden, okay? So uh, if we, how can we translate this into this? Simple. Our z, our translation formula is z is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation, right? Because that's what we saw before. Whoops, way before. There's our magical formula, x minus mu over sigma. So we've got our formula. We work it all out. We can say the probability that x is less than 2 is equal to the probability is just the probability and we're going to call it the cumulative distribution function translated into z coordinates of and let's see, here's, well, we'll, first we'll say x minus mu over sigma, and that is just f of z times, let's see, well, x, well, x is 2, and then minus whatever this would mean, which is 1, over, well, sigma is 0.1, or wait, sorry, <laughs> 0.5, and that just means it is, well, let's see, 2 minus 1 over 0.5 is actually, turns out to be 2 and so we look up the probability that uh, that z, so this is actually z just by happen chance seems it, it turns out to be the same as this x right here but it's it's actually so 2 and uh, so let's see what z is equal to 2 what that probability gives us let's go look it up on our very nice chart well actually we've got it on the page before so look here's 2.00 oh, is 0.9772. Okay, so let's go back here. Is equal to 0.9772. So that's a probability that, for example, we would find a cantaloupe um, that would weigh less than um, two kilograms. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean, if the mean was one kilogram as our cantaloupe. How about the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.46? So in other words, um, the probability that our cantaloupe would weigh 1.46 kilograms or less. Well, we'll do the same sort of thing again. We'll say the probability that our cantaloupe will, uh, it's, uh, let's see, oops, sorry. 
Let's try that again. We're going to go back here. We'll erase this. Okay, so the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.46 is the cumulative distribution function at 1.46, or we can say the cumulative distribution function on a if we translate into z coordinate systems, which is, and we're going to do the same thing here, x minus mu, so it's 1.46 minus 1 all over 0.5, and that is the cumulative distribution function translated into z terms, 0 0.92. And if we go look up 0.92 on our z tables, 0 0.92, 0 0.92 should be right here. Right there, it's going to be 0 0.8212. 0 0.8212 um, is our probability. Although that looks like a lousy 2, so I'll fix that up for you, 2. Okay, so that is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.46. So now we can look at a few useful formulas, and these are good for when we're using the conventional uh, standard normal distribution. We can say that the probability that z is greater than some value a, you know, that's greater than, right, so it's like going to be to the right, is just going to be 1 minus the, uh, the probability that it's less than a, which is this cumulative distribution function right here. The probability that it will be between two values well, just figure out what it is at B. Here's B, and figure out the cumulative distribution function at A. Subtract them, and you get this um, probability that represents sort of the intermediate, or the, the area that's in between. And the probability that of uh, the cumulative distribution function uh, is uh, of minus a, minus a, is just going to be 1 minus uh, the cumulative distribution function at a itself. So, let's see, if we have, let's see, f at minus a here, and here's f at a. So this whole thing, right, that goes right between those values, that's f at a. And if we take 1 minus it, it's this little part right here in yellow. And if we take, in essence, whatever that value is, the minus a is just this little value right here. Hopefully I made it clear. And all of these things happen because of symmetry of that, um, that dense probability density function about z is equal to 0. So let's talk a little bit about Miraculously, we have cleaned this up so we've got a little bit more room on this page. And piston rings are manufactured with a mean outer diameter d of 3 inches. Mean, okay, that's telling us right there we're going to have something like the diameter is characterized by a normal distribution with a mean of 3.5. Oh, 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 and let's see, let's see if it tells us somewhere where the standard deviation is. Ah, look at this right here, standard deviation is 0 
0.0006 inches. Ha! We've just got our characterization right there. So we've got our probability of the different diameters and it's centered around 3.0 with a, a standard deviation well, I can't draw that very well, so I'll just say standard deviation is 0 0.006. And they say if the piston's diameter is great th greater than 3.005 inches, so I don't know, let's just put that there, 3.005. If it's bigger than that, it's cruddy. It will not work properly. So we're going to put that right here. We're going to Okay, so if it's bigger than that, we know it's not going to work right. And likewise, if it's smaller than and this is 3.0 oh, oh, sorry. No, it's not 3. Point. We shall remove that. Okay. So we've got 2.990 right there. And we go like this, and they're saying if it's smaller than that, it's not going to work properly either. So basically, we're in trouble either way if it if it falls outside these bounds. But inside the bounds, it's going to work properly. So we're supposed to determine the probability that a given piston ring is defective. So well, what do we got to do? We just have to figure out what the area those two areas are add them together and we're in good shape so I'm going to write this down so you see it a little more clearly the probability that the diameter is greater than 3.005 unioned with the prob or the probability that the diameter is less than 2.99 zero is just going to be the probability that the diameter is less than three point or greater than three point oh oh five plus the probability that the diameter is less than two point nine nine oh and okay so if it's greater than that that's this part right here if it's greater than three point oh oh five this little part right here we're going to have to do the one minus business to find this. So we'll say it's one minus the cumulative distribution function of 3.005, right? Plus, well, I'm going to put that all in brackets, plus the cumulative distribution function of 2.990. That's this part right here that's less than the 2.990. <coughs> so what are we doing? We're going to translate this stuff into Z, um, Z values. So we'll say it's one, oops, 1 minus the cumulative distribution function translated into the Z axis which means it will be 3.005 minus 3.000 all over 0.006 and take that whole shebang and add it to the cumulative distribution function uh, translated into C values of 2.990 minus 3.000 all over 0 0.006. So what is this? We gotta do our little translations. It's gonna be 1 minus the cumulative distribution function and if you work this all out it's just gonna be 0 0.8 and then 
plus, and if you work this part all out, it's going to be cumulative distribution function translated onto the z-axis of minus 1.67, right, because you subtract those and you start getting a negative number. Now, you look up on the z-chart, what is, uh, what's the cumulative distribution function associated with, uh, um, with a z value of 0.83. So let's go look it up. 0.83. Okay, 0.83. Okay, that turns out to be this value right here, which is like 0 0.7967. 0 0.7967. So this is 0.7967. So it's going to be 1 minus that value. And this one's minus 1.67. So we'll go look that up. Minus, minus 1.6. There it is. 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. OK, so we're at 0.0475. Okay, so 0.0475. Okay, so we got all of this stuff, and when you add it all up, it gives you 0 0.2508. In other words, there's a 25, a uh, 0.02, oh, sorry, there is a 25% chance that our piston will not work properly. And that, as they say, is all, folks.